Okay, let's do a little quick review of kinetics. Now, I'm not going to be able to go through everything in this short amount of time, but I did want to review a couple of things. One of them is finding the rate of a reaction and very specifically finding the rate law. Now, the rate is the change in the concentration of a particular species over time. And the rate law tells us what effect the concentrations of our reactants has on that overall rate, okay? So if we want to find out what effect A has on the rate of the reaction, I need to do two experiments where B is held constant. So let's say I go one where one is um, A is 0.10 molar, another where A is 0.20 molar. In both of these, I keep B constant. And uh, just some theoretical data here, if I were to do this, I would find that that would be 0 0.0020, and this is molar per second, okay? The second one, uh, if we do that, we find that we are 0 0.008. And then finally, because B is also a reactant, I want to be able to determine what effect the concentration of B has on the rate of the reaction. So I need to do that where A is constant, but B is changed. So if I change this to 0 0.20 molar, now I have a couple of possibilities. I could do 0.10 or 0.20. I am going to choose 0.20 molar, um, just because that's a simpler one for me to work with. And in this particular case, 0 0.0160. Okay, I have all the information I need in order to find the rate law. Okay, so very simply, what I'm going to do is I am going to look at this. This changes by a factor of two. And if I look here, now again, the bigger one over the smaller one times two. The bigger one over the smaller one, this is times four. Now, if we recall, our rate law is equal to our rate constant K times our concentration of A to some power X, the concentration of B to some power y. Okay. In order to find x and y, that's what we're doing here. Now, 2 to the x power is equal to 4. The change here to the x power is the change here. Now, if I look over here, 2 to the x equals 4, well, I know that x equals 2. Okay. So this x now is a 2. So that's part of my rate law. Uh, but what next? I know you're thinking, why? Why do we need to do anything else? And what, of course, right there, why? Let's do the same thing, but let's look at where A is held constant, but B is changed. In this case, this is times two, and if I take, take 0 0.0160 divided by 0 0.0080, I find that this also is a times two. So in this case, two to the Y equals two, Well, we know from that that y is then equal to 1, and this gives us our rate law. Now, I have this rate constant k. How do I find it? Well, I have to substitute in any of these. Now, if it's really a constant, it doesn't matter which one. I should be able to do experiment 1, experiment 2, or experiment 3. In any case, I could do any of these, and I would get the same answer for k. So let's do the first one because that's simpler. And because we're in kinetics, our units are important here, okay? And that's equal to K, which is our unknown. And this is 0 0.01, sorry, 0 0.10, 0 0.10, if I can write, squared, because A is squared, times 0 0.10. And I've substituted in the first one. Now, I, I did something wrong here. I just put numbers in here. If I want to find the rate constant, the rate constant has units. I really need to do molarities, okay? So when I do this, this ends up being 0.1 times 0.1, which is 0.01, times 0.1, which is 0.001, and I end up with a value you can double check me on your calculator, okay? So if I mess up on the math, oh well. This ends up being 2.0. Now, this is molar per second. This is divided by molar times molar times molar. 2.01 over molars squared second. 
Overall, we say this is a third order reaction. It is second order in terms of A and first order in terms of B. Another way that we can look at a reaction, and just a quick review of this, I can also plot the concentration of a reactant or product over time, okay? Now, if I find that the rate of the reaction uh, decreases over time, which is what I would expect to see, and if I just do concentration versus time, if this is a straight line, this would indicate it would be a zero order reaction, but it might not be a straight line, okay? If the natural logarithm of concentration versus time is a straight line, let's say this particular one is a straight line, then the slope would be equal to negative k. Okay? If it's second order, it's going to be a straight line. So Zero first, second order. In this case, slope is equal to k. In this case, slope is equal to negative k. In this case, the slope would be equal to negative k. Now, these will be very obvious on a standardized test, although if you're actually in the lab doing this, you'll want to find the r squared value because you may find out that they look very, to the naked eye at least, very similar. But you may have one with an r squared of like 0.94 and the other one of an r squared of 0.998 that would be the one that you would choose, okay? And finally, I do want to mention reaction mechanisms. I'm not gonna go through a lot of review on me reaction mechanisms, but I want you to realize they are the steps towards the reaction for the overall reaction. The two things that you need to do, make sure that reaction adds up, your reaction mechanism, the steps adds up to the overall reaction, and that the information is consistent with the rate law. With that, enjoy your studying. I will hear, you, hear from you all tomorrow.